Next, talking about control plane. So we saw how management plane and how uh, data plane works. Then in the control plane, um, the component that actually provides the control plane functionality is purely vSmart. Again, this is also virtual, but it doesn't require that great of a resource. So your vSmart can function with a default config of two GB of RAM and one CPU. Or I think two CPU, sorry. Two GB RAM and two CPU. And it doesn't require any storage. It can function without storage as well. So with uh, one vSmart, can actually handle up to 5,400 WAN edges, but with one transport. Which means, if you have a vantage. If you enjoyed the content of the video, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. That is connected to iNet. That is connected to vSmart. Then, similarly, you can have like vantages, 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 and like this, you can have around 5,400 vantages, all connected to these and then formed up a connectivity. But if, if, if that turns out to be the other way, that the vantage is now connected to one more transport, NPLS, then there will be two tunnels. And these tunnels are also DTLS tunnels. You have a choice actually. It can be DTLS or TLS. The choice is only there between vSmart and Vanage. You don't have any choice between vManage and Vanage or uh, uh, vBond or Vanage. For vBond and vManage with the Vanage, the only choice is via DTLS. But if you choose to create a TLS session, uh, with the Vantage, you can do it with v, between vSmart and Vantage. And the difference between TLS and DTLS is nothing major. The purpose is same. It's just that one week, one works with TL or TCP and the other one works with UDP. So DTLS works with UDP and TLS works with TCP. Now, as I said, if your connectivity between the Vantage and vSmart is formed over two transports, then there will be two tunnels. One is this, and the other one is this. So similarly, if if the transports are increasing, then with two transports, your vantage is only going to be able to create or handle 5,400 divided by two, that is around 2,700 vantages. And if you add another transport, maybe LT and connect the same, then you'll have to divide it by three and it will only be able to handle 1800 vanages. So it depends on the number of connections and not on number of vanage. Unlike we, unlike we manage, we manage can handle around, uh, I think 2000 vanages irrespective of number of transport. Why is that? Because if you have, if you have we manage over here, we manage will only form up connection over, over a single transport. So if you have around three transport, in one time, we manage will only form of the connectivity with uh, over the over the single transport. So it can either form up a tunnel like this, or it can form up a tunnel like this, or it can form up a tunnel like some other transport. But at one time, it will only work with single transport and maintain only a single DTLS connection. If one fails down, then it will go to the other end. But with but with vSmart and Vanage, it is different. Whatever number of transports that you have, those are the number of DTLS connections that it's going to maintain throughout. The important thing that comes up over here is all the decisions are actually taken by your vSmart, as I said. And whenever you have vSmart works as a route reflector. So whenever a manage has any update, that update is going to be given to vSmart. vSmart will take decision on that and forward the update to the other manage. This is how exactly it's going to work. But vSmart does all of these things with the help of OMP, which stands for Overlay Management Protocol, because all the overlay is actually being managed by this protocol, Overlay Management Protocol, OMP. 
It is by default enabled onto all the managers and all the controllers. OMP cannot exist into the legacy network or legacy devices. So SD WAN is the only product that it works with that it works with OMP. But it is a very very powerful protocol because it ha it doesn't only handle the route update exchange. It handles the policy distribution. It handles the route information distribution. It handles the IPsec key distribution. It handles lots of other other things that it that that you need to take care of. So OMP handles uh, routing, key management, configuration updates, and lots of other things. Every communication that is done between the vSmart and WAN is, will be done with the help of OMP, Overlay Management Protocol. Without OMP, SD WAN is not uh, a solution at all. OMP is kind of heart of the solution. So the control pane is highly responsible uh, for encryption of the fabric as well. And uh, the key exchange is also done in a way that whenever Vanish creates any keys, those keys are given to vSmart. Then vSmart will do, do advertise those particular keys to the other Vanishes. Otherwise, uh, your tunnel will not come up. Now, let's say you have Vanish 1 and Vanish number 2, and you have a tunnel between both of these, like over here and over here. You have these tunnels up. Now, let's say the connectivity goes down via both of the transports, then what? So if there is a situation where the control connectivity was established, so control connection connectivity is nothing but the tunnel between vSmart and Vanish. And if there is a scenario where the control connectivity was established, but due to an outage, it has been lost, then the data plane connectivity, which is your IPsec, the data plane connectivity will continue to flow. And by default, the vanishes will continue to forward the data plane traffic in absence of the control plane for 12 hours of time. For 12 hours. And this is called as OMP graceful restart timer. And you can change this time from one second to seven days. You can definitely change this particular setting from one second to seven days. You just need to take care of your IPsec key negotiations because by default, IPsec key negotiations happens, I think, every 24 hours. There are key exchange that happens. If the key exchange is not happened by default, then the tunnel will, will kind of go down. So when you increase the timer of your IPsec tunnel, you need to take care of something as Cisco recommends that configure your IPsec rekey timer, double the time of OMP graceful restart, which means if you're, you have the ability to change the timer to seven days, right? If you let's say make it as 48 hours, then it is recommended to reconfigure your IPsec rekey timer to 96 hours. You get that? So if, if there is no connectivity again, that, that comes up into picture then IPsec key negotiations will not happen at all. If you keep your IPsec rekey as default, which is 24 hours, and then just increase the OMP graceful restart timer to 48 hours, then there would be IPsec keys that needs to be resynchronized or renegotiated. But because your control pane is down, then the connectivity will fail and it will break the IPsec tunnels that you maintain between the devices. Make sense? Questions? So you mean to say that suppose our vSmart went down, that time as well the branch will work without any issue, right? That's correct, yeah. Branches and will suppose, continue to... Okay, to suppose uh, I'm having site A and site B, okay? Uh, site mm -hmm. A, B and C, okay? And mm -hmm. the, there is a connectivity between those uh, uh, sites. And suppose my vSmart mm -hmm. went down and suddenly my site A went down. So how the traffic flow will happen, whether uh, the if traffic your site is down, then you need to you need to troubleshoot the data pane, right? The controller cannot really do anything in that particular purpose. But if it is controlling the routes, down, right? Sorry, it is controlling the routes. I think right? it's controlling the route for sure. But how it works mm -hmm. on the back end? Your vanish maintains the cache of the last received routing table. So it continues to trust on that particular routing table and keeps forwarding the data according to the last received information. 
But if your controller is down and your van is down, then for sure your data plane is also going down. The case is when the when the data plane is good, when your van is good, when your site is up, then mm -hmm. the con connectivity goes down. That's when IPsec tunnels will still be able to communicate with the remote site and, and send the traffic inside that. So that's how control plane actually works between them. So uh, you can come to a conclusion. Would, yes. Would, would be correct to say um, instead of saying uh, that when a V is smart is able to to handle uh, 5400 one edges uh, to mm -hmm. say it, it was able to it is able to handle 5400 uh, DTOS tunnels. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Correct. Yes. OK, OK. Yep. But that depends on the number of transport. If if each van is connected to some other transport, then the number kind of, number kind of decreases in half. Mm -hmm. OK. Yep. Yeah, here, uh, ex uh, except OMP, do we do we use any other, other porting, uh, routing protocols, other protocols? No, except we, OMP. I mean, on the on the land side, you definitely use this. Um, every IGP or EGP protocol that you want. Your IPsec uh, tunnels are established over the IGP only, right? The underlay protocol is going to be IGP or, or e e EGP. That can be BGP okay. or something to connect your sites. But in the overlay, in the tunnel, the protocol is going to be OMP. OMP doesn't have anything to do with, with underlay. And underlay do you have any have specific port number for this OMP? Um, there is no port number. It is not a session uh, like that, but the DTLS connections are established on port number 12346. Okay. 